Hello, welcome to the 2019 Cooper Medical School of Rowan University commencement ceremony. The processional is ready to begin. Please take a moment to locate the fire exit nearest your seat and aisle. In an emergency, exit quickly and quietly. Please note, smoking is not permitted in this building. Food and beverages are not permitted in the auditorium. At this time, please silence all cell phones and other electronic devices and remain seated during the processional so everyone can see. Thank you.
thank you to the Rowan Trumpet Ensemble, led by Dr. Brian Appleby Weinberg and organist Sean Burns. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for our national anthem, led by 2019 rowing graduate Lane Mossop. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket the bombs bursting in gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh said as that star spangled Please be seated and welcome to the stage the Dean of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University, Dr. Annette Raboli. Good afternoon and welcome to the commencement ceremony for Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. It is my pleasure to introduce our special guests Please hold your applause until everyone has been introduced. University President, Dr. Ali Hushmand. University Provost, Dr. James Newell. Rowan University Board of Trustees, Mr. Martin McKernan. Distinguished guests, Dr. Lawrence Weisberg, Grand Marshal. Dr. Charlene Williams, Gonfalier. Dr. Claire Pomeroy, keynote speaker. Members of the President's Cabinet, deans, advisory college board members, faculty, and other senior members of the administration. Last, <laughs> last but not least, there are two very important constituencies that must be recognized as well. Students, please rise and face the people most important in your lives, parents, partners, brothers, sisters, and loved ones who have provided support and resources to help bring us to this day. Secondly, please recognize your Rowan and Cooper families, faculty, staff, and administrators who share in your pride and success today. <laughs> please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the fourth commencement of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. It is a great honor and a privilege for me to be here and to, to, to see these amazing doctors graduating and going out there to heal others. Uh, 2009 it was that a brave governor, Governor Corzine, signed an executive order giving South Jersey and Camden uh, an institution and, and a medical school that is so badly deserved and didn't have. Up until that time, for about 30 years, there was UMDNJ, University of Medicine and Dentistry of New Jersey, 
that offered the two plus two program in Camden. For the first two years, people would, would go through school in New Brunswick or Newark and the remaining two years rotation in, in Camden. That executive order was so incredibly important that it completely transformed not only Rowan University, but I would dare say the future of Southern New Jersey. Uh, at that time, Rowan University in 2009 was really an unknown institution. It was not selective. It had roughly 10,000 students and roughly $180 million of operating budget and about 1,600 employees. The one program that was very good and excellent and very, very reputable and ranked, of course, engineering, but the rest of them really were not. <clears throat> And I remember in year, year 2006 when I was looking for a, for, a, for a provost job, I applied to Rowan University and I went to my colleagues and I told them I've applied to Rowan University for a provost position. They said, where is Rowan? That was in Drax Drexel University, about 20 miles from here. And how do you spell it? But the creation of that medical school, which, as I said, the executive order was signed in 2009, and I remember distinctly and in July of 2012, we opened the new building where you you have all edu been educated and graduated. And in year 2013, another brave governor, Governor Chris Christie, signed the Restructuring Act, where basically the entirety of UMDNJ was demolished and was divided into two parts. A big chunk of it went to Rutgers University, including two medical schools, allopathic medical schools. And what I will consider we did, jewel of the medical school, jewel of UMD and GA came to Rowan University in the form of a school of osteopathic medicine. So suddenly, an unknown, nobody cared university in South Jersey with 10,000 students became one of only two out of 4,000 universities in this great nation with two medical schools, both allopathic and osteopathic. Now to put that into perspective, 30 years before that, going from 19, 2009, back 30 years, there hadn't been a single medical school established in this country. So imagine what it takes. I remember people in North Jersey and some of the colleagues said, Rowan, medical school? Are you crazy? They're not gonna be able to make it. They don't know how to do it. They've never been in this field before. Boy, they were wrong. And as a result of those brave acts by those people, by those two governors. And of course, there were great legislatures like Steve Sweeney, like Donald Norcross, like George Norcross, a number of other leaders in here who constantly are strive to get the better share for South Jersey, managed to create these two schools. But let me give you some statistics so that I appreciate the, 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 the discrepancy between North and South. In South New, Southern New Jersey, the population of eight counties is roughly two and a half million population. It's about 30% of the population of the state of New Jersey of 9.3 million. Yet, if you look at the totality of undergraduate and university seats in North Jersey, you will find for every 30 citizens over there, there is one undergraduate seat available. If you were to look at South Jersey, however, that number is 100 to 1. And in fact, the national average is again 130 to 1. So, the southern New Jersey, with 2.5 million population, that deserves, at, has only 25,000 undergraduate seats, and it needs 100,000. Time and again, when it comes to resources, South Jersey is deprived. We get less and less. So I want to acknowledge today the amazing work that those legislatures and the two governors did in at least getting a little bit of share of South Jersey for us so that we can have these amazing medical schools, so that we can have these people standing here and healing people, especially in an area where this country badly needs doctors. By year 2030, they estimated more than 90,000 shortage of doctors in this country. By year 2020 in South Jersey, in, in, in Eastern New Jersey, shortage of 3,000 doctors, 2,000 of them primary care doctors. You look at South Jersey, go to Salem, go to Cumberland, go, go to, go to uh, Cape May, you will find that the veterans who need care, including South Jersey as well as Delaware. They have to drive all the way to Philadelphia, pay about $38 per hour for parking in order to get care. And none of that exists in here. 
Now through this, through medical school, we are creating relationship with the veteran affairs and providing those cares right in South Jersey so that those people don't have to suffer, especially the people who have sacrificed their lives for years and they deserve better. So what has happened in South Jersey as a result of creation of that medical school and subsequently the, the School of Osteopathic Medicine, Rowan University went from an unknown university to today being number 91 nationally research rank amongst public institutions. This is an amazing, <laughs> this is an amazing accomplishment by any standard. In a space of three years, 2013, Rowan was classified by Carnegie as a master's classified university. Could only allow to teach up to, or offer degrees up to a master's degree. Two years later, by Carnegie, we became research classified R3. There are three research levels of research classification, R3, R2, and R1, the highest. So we were down, be down below R3. We went from R3 to, from masters to R3 in two years, and in one year from R3 to R2. This has never happened before in amongst 4,000 universities in this country. Again, precisely because of the people that we sit in here, because these people bring the cognition and selectivity. Cooper Medical School of Rowan University this year was selected 10th in the nation in terms of selectivity. Only 3% of the students applied at your cap center. So be extremely proud of your kids. Be extremely proud of these graduates and you be extremely proud of yourself because you are highly selective, highly capable individuals. And I urge you and beg you to as much as possible try to pay back to your region because this region deserves better. There are amazing people in here. Yes, there are lots of farmers. Yes, there is a blue color people here. Yeah, we, we grow a lot of tomatoes, but boy, these are hardworking, taxpaying people and deserve better. So I am enormously grateful to Governor Christie, Governor Corzon for what they did in creating the opportunities for Rowan to become what it is so that we can have the graduates that we have. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, President Hushmand. Last fall, I had the pleasure of attending an Association of American Medical Colleges conference where the, one of the speakers presented one of the most compelling personal stories that I've ever heard with a message of resiliency and grit that strongly resonated with me and those in the room. I was thrilled when that speaker, Dr. Claire Pomeroy, accepted my invitation to address the class of 2019 today. Dr. Pomeroy is president and CEO of the Albert and Mary Lasker Foundation, which is dedicated to accelerating support for medical research. She also serves on the boards for multiple foundations and philanthropic organizations. Like me, Dr. Pomeroy specialized in infectious diseases, and we all know that that is the most important discipline. <laughs> Prior to joining the Lasker Foundation, she was vice chancellor and dean of the University of California Davis School of Medicine. As part of her special interest in healthcare policy and as an advocate for the social determinants of health, Dr. Pomeroy found at UC Davis's Center for Reducing Health Disparities. She established the Institute for Population Health Improvement and led the establishment of Rural Prime, a program designed to prepare physicians to practice in underserved rural communities. As a clinician, Dr. Pomeroy is a lifelong advocate for patients with HIV. Please join me in welcoming our 2019 commencement speaker, Dr. Claire Pomeroy. Graduates, today is your day of celebration. Today, your hard work culminates in the great honor of receiving your MD degree. Today, your family, your friends, and your community celebrate you, your dedication, and your successes. Because today, you officially join the most noble of the professions, medicine. You will now dedicate your life to improving health and serving others. Congratulations. By virtue of the credential you now hold, 
By virtue of your new title as a doctor, people will turn to you at their most vulnerable moments. They will share with you, as with no other, the intimate details of their bodies, their darkest fears, and their dearest hopes for the future. They will turn to you with the hope that you will discover new knowledge, new insights, new cures. They will literally trust you with their lives. This trust is a gift and an honor. And always remember that this honor comes with great obligations, the obligation to use your knowledge to benefit others, the obligation to put patients' needs above your own, and to embrace the values of altruism and professionalism. Now, you are graduating at an exciting time for this school. Your school is dedicated to finding answers to deep-seated inequities in health, and indeed has recently been recognized for this by becoming a finalist for the Sp Spencer Foreman Award for Outstanding Community Engagement, one of the highest honors a medical school can receive. And you will need the skills you have learned here. You are graduating at an unprecedented time of challenge for our nation and our profession. You will practice medicine in an era of tremendous change as we rise to address the urgent need to reform our health care system and achieve our mission of creating better health for all. It has been said that change does not roll in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes through bold vision, continuous work, and unflagging dedication, and this is what you are called upon to do. So as you accept your diploma today, you are also accepting the change to lead us to reform medicine. Seize the moment, lead the debate, define a brighter future, Use the power of your education to redesign our care delivery system so that it is truly a health care system, not a sick care system. Use your knowledge to create a system that highlights prevention and wellness, a system that provides coordinated care, a system that is safe, accessible, affordable, and equitable. Embrace your role as a societal leader, one who will work to correct the parts of the healthcare system that fail to serve the principles of social responsibility and social justice. You know, the United States has led and achieved tremendous scientific breakthroughs in medical care from vaccines to transplants to DNA sequencing to stem cell therapies and more. These advances are extraordinary milestones of progress that we, as health professionals and as a society, can be proud of. But we cannot be proud of the fact that our country continues to experience unconscionable health inequities. Our health care system remains inaccessible and unaffordable for too many in our nation and health outcomes fall far short of what a great nation like ours should achieve. The U.S. spends more per capita than any other country on health care, and yet has tragically disappointing outcomes. Despite spending almost twice as much per person compared to most other developed nations, we rank as a nation among the worst in indicators from infant mortality to life expectancy. We must proclaim that this is unacceptable. And our health care system today is characterized by shameful health disparities, disparities on the basis of race, ethnicity, geography, sexual orientation, immigration status, and socioeconomic class. Your health status should not be determined by the color of your skin or the zip code in which you live. We, you, must proclaim that this is unacceptable. As Martin Luther King profoundly stated nearly five decades ago, 
of all the forms of inequality. Injustice in healthcare is the most shocking and inhumane. And yet, these disparities are even more true today. Consider that maternal mortality among black women is four times higher than that of white women, and their babies are twice as likely to die. And consider that people with the highest incomes live up to 15 years longer than those at bottom income levels. And, and those are statistics. But their importance is in the lives of real people. Graduates, you learned about these realities during your years here, in your classrooms, and in the faces and the stories of those you cared for in the hospitals and clinics and in the community. And you learned that health is not the temporary absence of disease. Rather, it is the ability to thrive and flourish with fulfilling personal relationships and purpose in a setting of physical and economic security. You know that the need for change is urgent and that the failure to act is measured in human suffering. Robert Kennedy said, each time a man stands up for an ideal or acts to improve the lot of others or strikes out against injustice, he sends forth a tiny ripple of hope. Graduates, together, you can set in motion multiple ripples, and those ripples can come together as an uplifting wave to improve health for all. So how do you choose the ripples to make? The answers will come, I believe, if you can discover and follow your own moral compass. And to do so, you must look inside yourself to identify your core values and use them as your guide. Our core values define who we are, what we prioritize, how we use the opportunities we are given, and our life experiences shape our core values. And those values, in turn, influence the life path we choose to follow. For most, our core values are rooted in our childhoods. For me, it began in a home that was full of abuse and fear. And by the time I was 14, the choice was clear. Stay and risk my life or leave and learn to survive on my own. So I escaped, running into the dark night, just 14, scared and alone, uncertain where I would sleep or where I would get food to eat. And when a stranger gave me money to call a teen counseling center, I met people who found me a place to stay and help me enter the foster care system. I lived in four foster homes. My first foster home was an emergency placement and just as I was thinking maybe I could trust these people, it was time to go. And from this, I learned how, how hard it can be for the vulnerable and the abused to trust the system, to trust even those dedicated to caring. My second placement was with an African-American family who, though not quite knowing what to do with this blonde, blue-eyed white girl, opened their home with kindness. And from them, I learned about race and equality and social justice. My third placement also was with an African-American family. They were welcoming, but I was still wary. Then one day, I was doing the laundry, a load of whites, and accidentally added a red sweatshirt. I was petrified from my experiences growing up. I expected punishment and harsh words. And instead, they said, it's OK. And suddenly, we were united by a common color, pink. <laughs> from them, I learned about compassion and forgiveness. And my final placement was with a couple who became foster parents just to take care of me. And to them, I will always be grateful. They saved my life. And I learned that by giving of ourselves, we can give life to others. I beat the odds. People ask me, 
If my job today as president of the Lasker Foundation is hard and I tell them that nothing is as hard as being a teenager alone struggling to survive. But in a lot of ways, I was lucky. I had foster parents who took care of me, teachers who believed in me. But I saw a lot of other foster kids who were not so lucky, kids who were failed by the system, kids whose society was willing to throw away, kids who saw no future and therefore gave up hope. And from these children, I learned what really matters. From their teaching, my core values of caring for the vulnerable, fighting for social justice were born. And those core values have been my moral compass and guided all that I have done since. I went on to complete medical school and training in infectious disease, and I entered practice just as a new, unknown, and at the time terrifying disease called HIV AIDS began claiming the lives of previously healthy gay men. I saw young men who looked like old men, their bodies failing painfully and catastrophically from a devastating, fatal illness. And I saw them experience heartbreaking rejections, even in death, from families and friends and work colleagues who could not accept that they were gay. And I found myself working in a system that too often rejected and stigmatized my patients. So as I established the first HIV AIDS clinic at the Minneapolis VA, I fought for those men against unfair judgment. And I will always be grateful to the patients I worked with during those early years of the epidemic. They taught me that sometimes you have to push the system to do what is right, to work toward the greater good. And most importantly, those patients taught me what courage is and that love and acceptance are ultimately more powerful than hate and stigma that caring will always be stronger than rejection and discrimination. And so through this work, I was given the opportunity to live my core values of equity, diversity, and social justice that had been shaped by my early life experience. So I share with you, graduates, one piece of advice. Embrace your core values and understand what gives meaning to your life so that you can know the right way for you to give meaning to others. Starting the AIDS clinic, living in foster homes, surviving on the streets as a teenager are the experiences that have led me to live every day dedicated to one purpose, helping the most vulnerable, the people society is willing to abandon. For me, my core values are stirred to passion by the reminder that, as many have said, the greatness of a society is defined by the way it treats its most vulnerable members. Patients bring more than health challenges to the health care system. They bring the harsh realities of life, and their health issues will frequently represent symptoms of the disappointing inequalities in society. And this, this means that to care for them you must be community leaders who address social issues. Raise your voice to educate others about what we know to be true, that health is determined only in small part, about 10% by the care delivered in hospitals and clinics, that a much larger part is due to social determinants, factors such as income, education, safe housing, job opportunities, access to healthy foods, all the circumstances in which we are born, live, and age. And addressing these social determinants, these fundamental drivers of health status is a big task. But it is one that your time here has prepared you to take on. Always remember that true health only comes through social and economic justice. This is your time. This is your time to live your core values and attain the ultimate goal, making people's lives healthier and society stronger, kinder, and more just. You are the future of this country's well-being.
And I am confident that each of you will help fill the world with hope and happiness and health. I ask only that you heed Harriet Tubman's call to action as she said, every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars to change the world. Congratulations, class of 2019. Live your dream, change the world. Thank you so much, Dr. Pomeroy. What a, uh, an amazing and inspirational message. The Cooper Medical School of Rowan University Medal of Excellence recognizes an individual who has made outstanding contributions to medicine. Dr. Pomeroy is wi widely respected as a visionary and dynamic leader who is a strong advocate for improving the delivery of health care, especially for our most vulnerable populations. Through her work with the Albert and Mary Lasker Foundation, she has helped further the organization's mission to improve health by accelerating support for medical research through recognition of research excellence, public ed education, and advocacy. In recognition of her longstanding commitment to academic medicine and clinical care, as well as her advocacy for diversity, inclusion, and social justice, I am pleased to announce Dr. Claire Pomeroy as the recipient of the 2019 Cooper Medical School of Rowan University Medal of Excellence. You, wait. Oh, wrong one. I, I knew it. <laughs> You made my day special, now enjoy your special day. Thank you, sir. <laughs> At this time, I would like to invite Dr. James Newell, Rowan University Provost, to the lectern. Will all of our graduating students please stand? As you know, this past Saturday, we held our campus-wide commencement on the main campus to celebrate Rowan's bachelor's, master's, educational specialist, doctoral, and medical degree candidates. It was during this event that President Hushmand, Mr. Chad Bruner, the chair of the Rowan University Board of Trustees, and I officially certified our doctoral degree candidates as having completed all of the requirements for graduation. With that, our CMSRU graduates were conferred the Doctor of Medicine degree with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities and obligations of that degree. Congratulations to each of you. You may be seated. Happy graduation day, class of 2019. Congratulations for having successfully completed this first phase of your medical education. Today, you are surrounded by those who have been on this remarkable journey with you, your family, your friends, your faculty, and leadership. We're here to celebrate your achievement and your commencement to the next phase of your journey and to offer some parting words of advice. Today, you are on top of the world. So please, savor this moment. You've used your extraordinary gifts in a proper and amazing way. They brought you to this moment. You have demonstrated competency, service, leadership, and professionalism. While you still have much to learn, you now have a very solid platform of knowledge and skills. Last night, I asked, how will you be remembered? 
Today, I am asking, what can you do to make a difference? Just as Cooper Medical School of Rowan University hearkens to our mission in all that we do, as you commence to the next stage of your education, your journey through residency into the independent practice of medicine, we ask that you retain the core values espoused in our mission as part of your moral compass and internalize them as part of what has been called the sacred center. Continue to embrace humanism, diversity and inclusivity, and excellence in patient care. Continue to value scholarly activity, professionalism, collaboration, and mutual respect. Remain committed to service to your community, civic responsibility, patient advocacy, and lifelong learning. Many of you are staying in Camden and will continue to be part of the renaissance of this once great city. Several years ago, we coined the motto, Camden is our classroom, Camden is our home. Social mission is not just for institutions or those who are viewed as activists. I hope that no matter where your career ultimately brings you, that you will remain strong advocates for your patients and embrace the community in which you practice medicine as part of your personal social mission, just as you have embraced the Camden community that our school calls home. I urge you to be an integral part of your new community. Be involved in the activities of the schools and places of worship. Show that you care about your community and not merely reside or work in it. We don't hear the voices of physicians often enough. Please raise your individual and collective voice to address national and global inequality and health disparities and put it at the center of our national agenda. Exercise your gifts and skills and devote your energies not only to your individual patients' needs, but to unmet health needs of our society as a whole and work to advance better health for all. Strive to make health care better, safer, and less costly. Be good stewards of our society's limited resources. Accept the responsibility to be part of something that is greater than yourself. You are a moral leader in society and embrace that role. Inspire others not only with your words but through your actions. Lead by example. Stand up for science for truth, for reason. Our duties as physicians lie not only in the hospital, the operating room, or the ambulatory setting, but in making the struggles of our patients known in larger venues. Stand up for your patients, especially the vulnerable and the voiceless. Values and principles are only worth having if you are willing to act on them. Be true to your values. Make your words and actions reflect your values and don't be afraid to act on them. Physicians have important perspectives to bring to many debates, even though they might not seem to have a direct impact on medicine or immediate patient care. For example, we face global environmental issues that will lead to a resurgence of or even new infectious diseases, potentially famine, water shortages, and natural disasters. These put us at risk for social upheaval, violence, and potentially war. I challenge each of you, don't be complacent. Find an issue that negatively impacts your core values and try to affect change. Don't underestimate the impact you can make in the world of science and medicine, whether it is on the level of an individual patient and their family or a larger community or global scale. Please say yes to the challenges. Let your passions lead you to a higher purpose. All paths, though, ultimately lead to the patient. Trust and respect are important. You must earn the trust that others have in you, but give respect to others freely. Search for the dignity in each and every soul that you touch. You will be allowed into patients' lives in a way that no one else in society is permitted. You will see the best and you will see the worst of the human condition. You will have patients who are broken and vulnerable. Be sensitive to their needs. For the most vulnerable and broken, 
you must be more than a di diagnostician. You must be a healer in all ways. You will see amazing things, and you will develop extraordinary abilities. Never forget that the patient always comes first. Be conscientious, be compassionate, be accountable, and strive for excellence in everything you do in the healthcare arena. Bring your A game to the bedside each and every day. Bring to the bedside not only your training and technical skill, but also your humanity, caring, and concern. You will build skill and be enriched by each person you care for. Learn about your patients beyond their maladies. Every patient has a story to tell. Each will inspire you and teach you, but only if you let them. Always do what's right for the patient, even if you're tired, even if others disagree, even if you don't get compensated, and even if it's technically not your patient, always do what's right. Never compromise your integrity. When you're tired or feeling burnt out, think about the patients who trust you and depend on you. A life in medicine requires a life of learning. Science and technology are changing rapidly and the rate of change for your generation of physicians will be exponential. Be humble. Don't be afraid to acknowledge gaps in your knowledge, but always work to correct them. Commit to read and study so that you know the right thing to do. Medicine can't advance, let alone thrive or prosper by implementing what is already known. We need new ideas, creative solutions, and important discoveries. Retain your curiosity and never stop questioning. Continue to develop your resilience and emotional intelligence. I am convinced that these are skills that physicians of the 21st century will need to be successful. Medicine is a truly noble profession. Venues where we care for patients are sacred places because miracles happen in them every day. Day-to-day -day medical practice is rewarding, but challenging and could pull you in many different directions, trying to meet the requests and the demands that occur, often at unexpected times and places. Along the way, you will sometimes feel tired, perhaps exhausted, worn down, but you must resist letting cynicism rob you of the joy in our profession. Seek out those who embody the highest ideals of this healing art, those who are passionate and hit your wagons to their star. Life in general, and medicine in particular, is full of sobering and tragic moments. We share with our patients a very frail humanity. So please be sure to take care of yourself, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Keep your sense of humor. Setting priorities is not a compromise, but a choice. Unless you know the values that reside in your sacred center and the direction of your moral compass, you will find it difficult to navigate the next path of your journey, the amazing and challenging journey of residency. And even though there will be commonalities, the path will be a little different for each of you. It is not only possible to articulate your goals, what gives you meaning and how you define your values. It's very important to do so. I urge you to write them down and reflect on them. When you face the inevitable rocky road, such as making a difficult decision, knowing the direction of your moral compass becomes critically important. Today is a day of many emotions. I know you have a sense of incredible excitement, but also a sense of anxiety, which must be acknowledged. And just as you embody the hopes and dreams of your families who are here today, so too, you, as the future leaders in medicine, carry the dreams of my generation of physicians to continue to advance and improve our practice of medicine, to continue to serve those in need. And soon you will also have the awesome responsibility of guiding others on this journey. CMSRU class of 2019, you are 75 newly minted doctors, my fellow physicians, my colleagues, healers. From this day forward, these names will identify you. 
but only you will add positive meaning and definition to them by your actions and deeds. Congratulations on all you have accomplished so far. It has been my honor for me and my colleagues to be on this magnificent journey with you. I will forever be proud of each and every one of you. Thank you for your contributions to CMSRU and to Camden. You have enriched our school and our community. Remember what I told you on match day, CMS will always be your home and we are forever bound together. May your journey be fruitful and rewarding. I know you're gonna accomplish great things. Thank you. Now we will switch gears a bit. I'm pleased to introduce a special portion of our program to honor and celebrate our military graduate who will be promoted in the United States Navy. We thank you for your service and sacrifice and applaud your great work for our profession and for our country to provide medical services to our forces both home and abroad. I invite Lieutenant Colonel John Chavanez to the lectern at this time for our military commissioning ceremony. Dr. Chavanez is an assistant professor of surgery at CMSRU and works in Cooper's Level 1 Trauma Center where he is chief surgeon for the section of military, diplomatic, and field surgical affairs. He serves in the U.S. Army Reserve Medical Corps in the rank of lieutenant colonel and has completed three tours of duty at combat support hospitals in Iraq and Afghanistan. I also invite our military student, Navy Ensign Haley Brown, to come forward.
Congratulations, Lieutenant Brown. One of the nice things about being at a new school is we get to establish new traditions. So last year we established a new tradition of presenting four special awards at commencement. These special awards recognize students who have achieved excellence in areas that resonate with important aspects of our mission. I'd like to invite Dr. Perlis to come to the stage, please. Hello, I'm Dr. Susan Perlis, Associate Dean for Medical Education. The Dean's Award for Academic Excellence is given to the graduate with the highest overall academic achievement. The 2019 Dean's Award for Academic Excellence goes to Lindsay Ryan. Hello, I'm Dr. Jocelyn Mitchell Williams, Associate Dean for Diversity and Community Affairs. The Dean's Award for Service to the Community honors the graduate who has excelled in service to the community. The 2019 Dean's Award for Service to the Community goes to Priyanka Chug. I'd like to invite Dr. Viner to come up. Hi again. I'm Dr. Ed Viner, professor of medicine and the founding director of the CMSRU Center for Humanism. We're at a time when humanism is challenged in medicine. There's so much technologic advance and so much pressure and other issues on physicians that we sometimes forget uh, that the patients need us on a human level. So this year's award on, for the humanism in medicine honors the graduate who best exemplifies humanistic values. And while she's coming up, I'm gonna tell you just this little story. Dr. Lindsay, Lieutenant Lindsay Brown. No, no, I'm sorry, I've got that confused. Dr. Lindsay Ryan, please. Now, what I want to tell you is that I was involved with the earliest interactions between Lindsay and patients. You all know, your parents know that they have simulated patients and they learn how to talk to patients. And she was as green as any of the others and uh, I was, again, privileged to be leading this group. And I hearkened back to my own days as a patient when I was in the hospital for four months, and I decided I could tell within 30 to 60 seconds 
any time new, any new uh, health care provider came to my bedside, whether they be doctor, nurse, the, the uh, environmental engineer that wipes the floor around your bed, or whatever, whether they cared or not. And the ability to communicate this is extremely important, to have it, first of all, and to be able to communicate it is very, very vital to being a good physician in the full sense of that word. And I could tell way back then, Lindsay, that you had that. Congratulations. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Did it stop snowing in Minnesota? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Dr. Viner, you're needed. <laughs> Dr. Viner, photo. <laughs> we have one last Dean's Award to present. And it gives me great honor uh, to present the Dean's Award for Leadership. This honors the graduate who has demonstrated exceptional leadership skills throughout the four years of medical school. So the 2019 Dean's Award for Leadership goes to Danny Pericic. Danny, please come forward to accept this honor. At this time, I'd like to recognize all of the service and academic award recipients. They are listed in your program and were recognized as ceremony last evening. Will all of these graduates please stand and be recognized? Congratulations on your achievements. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Marion Lombardi, Chief Student Affairs Officer at the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University. And in my role as Chief Student Affairs Officer, <laughs> I oversee and liaise with the Student Government Association. The bylaws of the CMSRU Student Government Association state that the Student Government Association, or SGA as it's commonly known, was created to maintain communication between students and the administration, faculty, and other relevant professional associations. The CMSRU SGA is responsible for governing student interests, advocating for student concerns, providing support and recognition for recognized student organizations, and serving students by hosting activities and events that enhance student life. As president of the SGA, Danny Perichik embodies the CMSRU SGA mission of preserving good order, fellowship, and decorum among the students. He has committed himself to representing the class of 2019 by working to enrich the social and educational environments of Cooper Medical School of Rowan University and the Camden community at large. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege and a pleasure for me to introduce the SGA president for the class of 2019, Dr. Daniel Perichik. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lombardi, for that very kind introduction and for the honor of being able to stand up here today and address all of you. For those of you looking in your programs and wondering how to say my name, I've been trying to figure that one out for the past 28 years, and I still don't have a good answer for you. 
Um, uh, I have to apologize, though, because to the friends and family, because 98% of this speech is not going to make any sense to you, and the other 2% isn't going to make sense to anybody. <laughs> but 100% of this speech is going to make sense to you, Will, 100%. My name is Danny Perichich, but that's not important today. I'm up here because I hosted a lot of social events our first year of medical school, um, but I could give you 10 reasons of why any one of my classmates here could be up at this podium. Today is about all of us, about CMSRU, and about what we have done for each other during our time here, and what a time we have had. We've become a family. We've become a family in every sense of the word and with all the characters to complete it. We have Lindsay as the loving mother whose kindness knows no limits. We have James, the overachieving big brother that's already Instagram famous. <laughs> and we have Matt and Christian, the overachieving younger brothers that finished med school in three years and making the rest of us look bad. <laughs> we even have our very own weird Uncle Al, who if you direct your attention over here, you can see that he's in Texas. Um, through these four years together, we have grown up as physicians, as human beings, and we have forged eternal relationships, and we have left an everlasting mark on this school and on the community of Camden. But the street goes both ways. While we are busy leaving our mark on the school, Camden and CMSRU were leaving their own mark on us. Think about how many of the M1s, 2s, and 3s you've influenced during our time here. We've all been teachers in clinic, advisors to clueless first years, uh, and we've been lighthouses to everyone else that's gotten lost along the way, serving as beacons of light to guide them through the darkness and into the clear blue skies of high yield. Uh, I know that my mentee in Blackwell uh, is going for ophthalmology, just like me, because he doesn't want to work any weekends either. And that's because of me. We all have hundreds of these stories. But at CMSRU, there are equal parts of Sammy, Priyanka, and Tamara's work for diversity, Kiki's Medical Spanish Clinic Guide, Mike and Ryan's Steve's Clubs, Tom's Coffee Houses, Emily's Girls on the Run, Hansel's Poop Lecture, uh, <laughs> Catherine's Colon Cancer Awareness Days, Sarah and Keisha's Yoga Classes, Ify's Free Food Updates, Jenna's Best Plenary Ever, Ben's Piano Playing, Melissa, Claire, and Danny's Prom Dance Moves, Alina's Friends Givings, Jessa's Haunted Hay Rides, Monty's Eloquence, Eddie's study resources, Alex's pool parties, and Jim's always perfect FMP memes. <laughs> Just as there are Dr. Gable's tables, Dr. Mukherjee's ice cream rounds, Dr. Swope's balloon animals, Dr. Coker's dolly bodies, <laughs> Dr. Fatari's flashcards, Dr. Suarez's raunchy women's health lectures, <laughs> Dr. Kavi's unlimited wisdom, Dr. Mama's unlimited energy, and Dr. Meislick, Dr. Feingold, and Dr. Kim's unlimited baked goods. Uh, Dr. Spitz's never-ending whipples, this never-ending sentence. Uh, Dr. Aguilar's dissection of uh, supervillain Regina George's personality disorder. Dr. Damon's supernatural, if totally unfair, basketball ability. Dr. Sonny Patel's guidance. And of course, who could forget Dr. Fisher giving birth to Mama Luke's baby? This school and our curriculum has influenced me so much that I thought that the famous Van Gogh painting, The Starry Night, was painted by one of the Bailings. That, there's some culture for you, Matt, if you're out there. CMSRU does an incredible job of forming a sense of community, and I mean it when I say that we are a family. We have had classmates take gap years, but they're still the class of 2019, no matter what anybody says. You hear that, Dr. Coolahan and Dr. Gregorian? Uh, we've adopted so many more along the way with open arms. Kristen, Emily, Jen, Abby, Ron, Robin, everyone else we picked up along the way, thank you for joining our class and making our lives brighter. Um, for those that took time off, we miss you guys. We really do. Chanani, Rebecca, Swar, Swar2, this means Swar, <laughs> all you guys. And if you don't think we're a family, I dare you to prove me wrong. We were all there for Carly during her tough times, and I cannot say enough about Kirby, who organized not just our class, but the whole Cooper Rowan community to help her out. So everyone give her a round of applause. She deserves it. And that's reasons number one through 20 of why she could be standing up here in my place. Although she'd probably just end up showing you guys pictures of her dogs. 
And I can safely say, though, that the smartest person involved in the CMSRU community, though, is not you, Dr. Gable, somehow, and not you either, Dad, but Ryan Perez. Ryan was smart enough to fly out here, move his entire life, leave his friends and family to be with our classmate, Rachel, who, and they ended up getting married, and she just had twins last night. And Haley, I'm trying to get one named after me, so if you can uh, just text her. Um, but we've done such a fantastic job as a class, sending out the likes of Megan, Spencer, Mark, and Nick to wonderful programs around the country. And Cooper has done just as well by holding on to Melanie, Emily, Kevin, and Anne, among others. And how about Rita, the first female neurosurgeon from our school? Come on, guys. Philly is no stranger either to the goods our school has produced. I'm lucky that when I'm walking down Broad Street and I stub my toe, I can walk into an emergency room and I'll have, I'll have Julia, Kate, and Eric all there to tell me to grow up. <laughs> I'll have Rahit to tell me that no, I don't need to go to rehab. And I'll have Courtney there to confirm that there is something in fact wrong with my head. <laughs> Colin, I hope I never have to step foot in your urology <laughs> office. <laughs> But, I mean, who else here is jealous of our classmates that match together and are going to be able to call each other co-residents? Michelle, Zillin, and Jace all at the same emergency medicine program? Greek Nick, you're going to have the easiest admissions when they're working. I can't believe it. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, I'm lucky, too, though. I'm so lucky that I'm literally going to have the nicest person ever in Jess Moore as one of my colleagues at Temple. I'm lucky that I'm going to... I'm lucky that I'm going to be able to consult Nafisa when something on a CAT scan looks kind of gray. And Will, you'll also be there. <laughs> I'm going to miss taking the morning train with you, Alyssa, and the afternoon train with you, Nadia. I'll miss our car room sleepovers, Aria, and our uh, take you lunches on them. Our question reviews, Carrie, our ALG antics, Lauren, Benna, and Haley, our discussions about librarians, Christina. Super Smash tournaments, Jason, our anatomy dissections, Jen. Learning how to give presentations in the hospital with you, Stanley. Playing cup challenge volleyball with you, Tall Eddie. And going to rock shows with you, Small Eddie. <laughs> uh, camping with you, Irina. S Saturday football with you, Sean. Playing sharks and minnows with you, Ray. And casual refreshments with you, Eric. I'm going to miss it all. And that's what I mean when I say that we are a family because we're so much bigger than just the 75 of us graduating today. We are here because of all of you out there, our spouses, adult children, and parents, in that order, apparently. <laughs> we are here because of the friends, the family, the significant others, the mentors and role models, Brett's kids. I hope that every future class that comes through our walls is as connected uh, as ours is. And I have to thank Dr. Raboli, Dr. Coker, and everyone in the administration that worked so hard from day one to uh, make our class into what it is today. We are the fourth graduating class in CMSRU's history. Now, in baseball, you put your best hitter up fourth so that they can hit the grand slam. And I'm not saying that we're the best class at CMSRU. I'm definitely not saying we're the best class that they'll ever have. I'm definitely not saying that, guys. <laughs> but just look at where we are in the batting order. <laughs> class of 2019, I love you guys all so much. Good luck. Stay in touch. You're all destined for greatness. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Bill Coker, Associate Dean for Admissions. At this time, I'd like to ask our class of 2019 to rise. I'd also like to invite our faculty members on stage and in the audience to rise and recite with me the Hippocratic Oath. You can find the oath on page 15 of your program.
Please recite with me. I do solemnly swear by that which I hold most sacred that I will be loyal to the profession of medicine and just and generous to its members, that I will lead my life and practice my art in uprightness and honor, that into whatsoever house I shall enter, it shall be for the good of the sick to the utmost of my power, holding myself aloof from wrong, from corruption, from the tempting of others to vice, that I will exercise my art solely for the cure of my patients and will give no drug, perform no operation for a criminal purpose, even if solicited, far less suggested, that whatsoever I shall see or hear of the lives of my patients, which is not fitting to be spoken, I will keep inviolably secret. These things I do promise, and in proportion as I am faithful to this oath, may happiness and good repute be ever mine, the opposite if I shall be forsworn. Thank you and congratulations. Good afternoon. I am Dr. Aaron Pukenis, Assistant Dean for Student Affairs. The act of hooding signifies the successful completion of medical school training and welcomes the graduates to the profession of medicine. The practical roots of the academic regalia date back to the Middle Ages. The costume originated at a time when a warm gown and hood were useful for scholars and clerics in cold, unheated learning spaces. The distinctive gown also served to set the students apart from their fellow citizens. In the late 1800s, the styles and colors for robes and hoods were standardized in the United States. At that time, it was decided that all robes would be black and doctoral gowns would be faced with black velvet with three bars across the sleeves. The hood would vary in length and color depending upon degree. Today, the interior of the hood displays the university colors, and the facing and backing of the hood are in green. Chosen for its symbolism for herbs and plants, green denotes the honor of the degree of medicine. The Cooper Medical School of Rowan University faculty will now formally acknowledge and celebrate the achievements of our graduating students by investing each student with an academic hood. It's time to proceed to the moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of our graduates. Before we begin, I ask all family members to please remain in your seats so that you will not obstruct the view of others or get in the way of the students. A professional photographer will take three photos of our students, one as they are hooded, another as they shake hands, and a third at the bottom of the stage. The students have been given information to have the proofs mailed home. Also, you are welcome to take photos in front of the platform stage at the conclusion of the ceremony. And now the moment we've all been waiting for, the reading of the names. Each of our graduates will be called individually and will be awarded a hood and diploma cover. One of the hallmarks of our school is our four advisory colleges. Each student at CMSRU belongs to an advisory college led by faculty directors and named after a giant in medicine. These colleges play a critical role in the well-being, personal growth and development and career advising for our students. Our students will receive their diplomas by advisory college and will be hooded by their college directors. Blackwell, please stand and proceed to the stage.
Dr. Dr. Emily McKenna. Dr. Catherine Marchetta. Dr. Daniel Josip Pericic. Dr. Pericic is being hooded by his father, Dr. Romeo Pericic. Dr. Christian Bruni. Dr. Samantha Kennedy. Dr. Lindsay Ryan. Dr. Lakeisha Mulugeta Gordon. <laughs> Dr. Sarah Phillips. Dr. Jason Ho. <laughs> Dr. Mark McShane. Dr. Emily Robb. <laughs> Dr. Julia Moon. <laughs> Dr. Moon is being hooded by her brother, Dr. Jeffrey Moon. Dr. Edward Joseph Egan. <laughs> Dr. Brett Cowan. Dr. Thomas Clyde. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Moore.
Dr. Rita Datsy. Dr. Datsy is being hooded by her mother, Dr. Merlinda Datsy. Dr. Nicholas Hoyle. Dr. Collins Burling. The students of the Cushing College, please come forward. Dr. Charlotte, Dr. Haley Charlotte Brown. <laughs> Dr. Benazir Uli. Dr. Kristen Morgado. Dr. Jennifer Nestor. Dr. Robert Duffy. Dr. Alyssa Mayo. Dr. Carrie Serrano. <laughs> Dr. Kevin Gama. Dr. Rahid Mohammed. <laughs> Dr. 
Dr. Kai-Yi Lee. Dr. Danielle Lee. Dr. Melissa Burke. Dr. Melissa Burke is being hooded by CMSRU's Associate Dean for Diversity and Community Affairs, Dr. Jocelyn Mitchell-Williams. Dr. Nafisa Ria. Dr. Unam Uslam. <laughs> Dr. Theodoropoulos. Dr. Jenna McLean. Dr. Stephen McLean is hooding his daughter. Dr. Dr. Alexander Padron. Dr. Padron is being hooded by his mother, Dr. Celia Padron. <laughs> Dr. Spencer Ng. Dr. A. Michael Luciani. <laughs> Will the students from Osler step forward? Dr. Stanley Dumont. <laughs> Dr. Irina Nagovsky.
Dr. Luke Stenis. Dr. Eric Chavez. Dr. Catherine Kerbos. Dr. Caitlin Levy. Dr. Sean Stevens. Dr. Megan Murphy. Dr. Lauren Kelsey Young. Dr. Martin Lasasso. Dr. Ann Boguslavsky. Dr. Emily Catherine Rose. Dr. Courtney Kern. <laughs> Dr. Zillin Zhao. Dr. Nadia Scott. <laughs> Dr. Hansel Chung. Dr. James Perucho. Students from Rush College, please join us on stage. Dr. Matthew Nelson.
Dr. Tamara Sklars. Dr. Priyanka Verma Chug. Dr. Chug is being hooded by her mother, uh, Dr. Ridu Verma. Dr. Jace Morgenstein. <laughs> Dr. Michelle Safferman. <laughs> Dr. Safferman is being hooded by her father, Dr. David Safferman. Dr. Christina Muller. <laughs> Dr. Edward Fernandez. <laughs> Dr. Fernandez is being hooded by his father, Dr. Eduardo Fernandez. Dr. William Casper. <laughs> Dr. Ryan Mathern. Dr. Raymond Schlitt. <laughs> Dr. Schlitt is being hooded by his father, Dr. Mark Schlitt. <laughs> Dr. James Childress. Dr. Jennifer Allison. <laughs> Dr. Eric Hasben. <laughs> Dr. Hasben is being hooded by his father, Dr. Raphael Hasben. Dr. Melody Betchen. <laughs> Dr. Benjamin Ciccarelli.
Dr. Arya Shafai. Dr. Yunyang Claire Kim. And Dr. Ronald Ikechi Ogbona. Thank you for attending today's ceremony and congratulations to the Cooper Medical School of Rowan University class of 2019. We ask the audience to please remain in place until the platform party has recessed. A reception will follow on the Wilson Hall patio in the tent just outside this building, and we'd love it if all of you could join us. Uh, will everyone please rise for the alma mater and remain standing for the recessional?